cool. So, um, I think today I'm going to try and just tidy up some bits. Um, I've got these screens, let's turn that down a bit. I've got these screens here where the user can input an item. Um, so you can add the name of the item, you can select what categories the item belongs to, and you can do various things for that item, like how often you're going to use it, and some reasons why you might need to buy it, and then so on. Um, the whole purpose of this is just to collect some details about a belonging before someone buys it, and then you know, give them some time to reflect on the purchase. The screen, I'm quite happy with the visuals at the moment, <laughs> probably will change a lot. <laughs> um, we're just trying to focus on some functionality. The only problem is that at the moment this class is has become a, a bit of a mess. Um, we know how side projects are, we kind of just whacked it out and pieced stuff together whilst I was learning Compose. Uh, it's kind of got to the point where it's quite hard to, <laughs> hard to understand what's going on and yeah, you can see already. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on because this contains each different each different screen, each different slide, let's say. Um, so yeah, it's got a bit a bit tricky to maintain. So I think what I'm gonna do this morning, I've got like 20 minutes, half an hour, is just start trying to split stuff out. Like there's a lot of things that are the same on these screens. Um, for example, the title is pretty much the same on each screen. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Um, same size, same positioning, same gravity. Um, and that's the cool thing about Compose is that we can easily create reusable components. Um, so I think what I might start with doing is just creating like a, a title text composable uh, and split that out so that we can can reuse it. Um, I'm going to keep everything in this file for now, and I think what I want to do over the next few days is like start breaking each of these things up and try and reduce the amount of code in this class, um, and then maybe split things out into separate files just so it's a bit easier to understand like what's actually going on um, yeah so I think what I'll do to start with I can't even remember why that's being used Ambient, okay okay what we do to start with is we're just we're making you com composable um, so just a heads up I'm not using the preview because I think I'm on Canary 8 and I read something that oh, Canary 7 I'm on Canary 7 and I read something that the compose preview is broken for Kotlin 1.4 um, so that's why we're not able to use the preview on this screen um, so we're just going to use the emulator um, not the best way and it's a bit a bit longer but hey it will do for now um, cool so let's make a new composable um, let's just call it title composable for now we can always come back and change it so what we'll do is we'll just take this existing one um, and see if we can split it out cool that looks great so if we remove that and we'll just call our title composable and that should be all fine and dandy um, yeah so cool with that in place turn the music up a bit um, cool so we've got our title composable and we're using it there um, and what I want to do now is maybe you know we want to reuse this so we're going to want to pass a string value into the function and that can just be used so let's just call say title and then I'll take that out so now now this function a oh, bit of lag now this function can take a string and use that string for its text um, so here we can say title and my string resource and it's going to take in that that title and use that there so that's good. So, you know, that hasn't really changed the amount of code we've got because we only use it in one place, but, you know, it's a, a little step of improvement. Um, I don't know. <laughs> to be honest, I can't remember why I use this. It might have been a workaround or something. Um, basically, if you've already got an existing... Oh, there goes a the bus. If you've already got an existing text style, um, I think you can use this to get that text style and kind of merge another style with it so that you don't um, lose an existing style on a composable. I don't think we need that anymore. Um, let's, get, let's check. Um, the best way to do that is to check <laughs> um, rather than have it there and it not be required. Um, I'm just going to run that and see what it looks like. I think my laptop's struggling a bit. 
Um, sorry for the noise, by the way. I think my window's open. It's really hot here um, at the moment for the UK, so I'm not quite used to the temperature. But um, yeah, so that that should work. Um, we'll give it a moment to build and see how that's like. Um, but we've we've got this title composable um, that we can now reuse in other places as well. So wherever we on each of those slides where we have a title, we're now going to reuse that composable and um, hopefully make things a bit more manageable. Um, now our screen's launched, we can run it. Uh, ignore that stuff, it's still work in progress. Da -da. So we were on the remind days. Cool, that looks good. So I don't think we needed that current text style. I think that might have been something I had in place previously. Um, but I don't think it's needed now because the text, we're creating a new text that doesn't have a, an existing style so I don't see why we would have needed it anyway. Um, yeah, so just for context we're, we're aligning the text to the centre, you can see here it's centrally aligned, setting the size and then also setting the colour. Um, something I'll do down the line is improve my theming um, because literally I'm having to do this on it for every text on this screen because the background colour is blue. Um, so yeah, maybe uh, it might be worth having a separate theme or, or something that gl sets that style uh, globally for for this background. Um, um, I think that we could probably even use a colour on primary. Um, let's see. Uh, colours. I can't remember what this is. The Do I have a colour? I thought I had a colour on primary. There we go, on primary. I can't remember if that is. There we go. Um, minimise theme. So my primary is... Okay, so... Okay, yeah, so that's not going to work. On primary should be white. Let's change that. I'm not sure if it's going to break anything um, because let's change that for now. Um, just because I think I think it's meant. To, I think that makes sense because if blues are primary color, the grey isn't quite visible. Um, we'll change that for now and we'll see how it does. Uh, if it breaks anything else, we can fix it later. Cool. So we've got our title composable, and we're now using a theme a theme colour rather than a hard coded colour so that's a bit more flexible now because I plan on adding like dark theme in future so um, that will make things much more maintainable uh, moving forward. Um, cool so let's reuse this in other places so now we've got this title composable being reused um, I'm going to go through and try and find every other use of that title text um, again there's a lot going on here and, and the point of this is trying to tidy things up and try and reuse some of the code so we're going to do the same here, and this is, as you can see, this is exactly the same as what we had above. Um, we're just using a different string. We'll do the same. We'll copy that just to save us typing it. Um, there must be another one. I could probably do a search, but it's a good chance for me to remember what's going on. Okay, so here's a hard-coded string. Um, I don't, okay, yeah. So this is still called a hint. Um, so previously, just for some context, these used to be like input fields and there was a hint and you'd click on the input field and then the hint would disappear. But now, um, just for ease of functionality and also a bit more, making it, giving a bit more context to the user, um, to decide to make them titles. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to call this next one um, title and we'll rename the others in the future. Um, so we call this title negative reasons so these are this is the title for the reasons why the user might not want or might not need to buy the item um, cool so now we can I'm sure why that ah, okay so the modifier was different there but that should be fine um, we should be able to jeez <laughs> that, is, that is struggling 64 gig RAM for nothing <laughs> um, I don't think there's anything I can close either maybe Chrome <laughs> I probably could close Chrome. Let's force quit. Oh 
I my music. Oh, I can't quit Chrome. It's fine. I have to live with the lag. Another one here. Um, cool. So negative reasons. We're gonna have this positive reasons title now. Um, and do the same thing. So we've already, you know, we're already cutting down this by quite a bit of code. Um, as you can see, this title was being the same titles. You know, it's just like whether we're using compose or not. Um, it's always good to reuse code um, where it makes sense and where it doesn't complicate things. Um, and the cool thing about this is now that if this, we can probably add a test for this composable anyway. But um, writing tests for compose really doesn't require a lot of for composables, sorry, really doesn't require a lot of code. So having these individual composables really allows us to, you know, test each thing individually. And we can still test flows as a whole, but being able to have each of these things individual really improves their testability. Um, this should be the last, <laughs> this should be the last hard-coded string. Um, we know how it is in our side projects. We just get the job done, um, and then <laughs> and then pay for it later. Um, yeah, I promise my <laughs> my professional work <laughs> does not follow so the same suit. Um, cool. Sorry about the lag. I think that, that I think half that is probably having the emulator running as well. I think having the preview in Android Studio and Canary Eight is back up and running. Um, that'd be nice. Ah, oh, yes, already got a string. Cool. So that should be product name composable screen is is the first one. So that's this should be the last title composable that we need to add. So if I replace that, wow, um, then that should be all of them. So yeah, so what we've done there is we've taken each text, we've created our own composable function and reused it throughout the different screens. And that should that should run, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's nothing fancy. It's just you know a simple composable that displays the text. Um, and just for example, example sake, um, if I can find where this is, we well, maybe we can write. A, I've already got time to write a quick test. Um, my tests are already set up and we don't have to do any extra configuration. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's just check that runs and we should be fine. Um, cool. So let's go add. Give that a minute to, to build. Um, maybe we do. Maybe just add a test again. This is like it's only a composable that shows a text, a piece of text. But you know, it will take us a few moments to write a test, and it's good, good, good chance to to, to try it out. So title composable. Let's just write one called displays text. Um, and we're not going to use this launch content because what I've got here is basically um, whenever you call this launch content function, it generates the whole creation screen which is every single slide every single flow which is a lot um, don't really don't really need that um, we don't really care about all of that so what I'm gonna do here is copy that um, so when you call this compose test rule and you set content it, it basically takes the composables you give it and sets it on the screen so that like compared to how we usually set up tests. Um, this is really neat, um, really quick way. You can see there's not a lot of code required to get the UI test up and running. I think it really reduced the friction um, needed there. So yeah, our titles look great. Um, and we've really cut down the amount of code that's being used there, um, which is which is great. Um, good good first step to tidying things up. A long way to go, but um, it's looking good so far. So what I might do is do a title composable. Maybe this will work. Can I do this? Yeah. Cool. So let's set our title. Um, this is a title. 
nothing fancy. And we're, what we do here is we're setting our content, passing our total composable, giving it a string, and that, that should be displayed for us. And then what we can do is then we can say on node with text, pass in our title, and we can say that it should be displayed. Um, all these test functions here, I'm sure we'll use plenty of them in the future. Oh, what was that? Sorry, getting sidetracked there. There's a bunch of new functions which I hadn't seen before. So, um, yeah, let's let's run that, and um, that should work. Um, fingers crossed. There's no there's no wood to touch near me, but um, that should work fine. And again, you could argue, do I need this test? Is it is it useful? Um, but it's just you know it gives us a bit of coverage and, and it ensures that it's composable, which is now being used in what seven different places. Um, you know, is, is working as expected. Um, yeah, so that test should run and we should be good to go. Um, how long are we doing for time? Yeah, I'm not sure it's worth starting too much else now. Um, I feel pretty, that's a, a, a nice little task to have done. Um, splitting that into composable, show you a bit of insight into how composables work. Um, yeah, let's just see that. Taking its, taking its time. Um, cool. I'm trying to think. So if we go to the top, where this is um, set up. Again, apologies for everything that is going on here. Um. I wonder if there's anything else we can do. Go cool, here we go. Let's see this test. How this test does. Maybe the test will fail. Maybe we'll have to fix that. <laughs> um, that should be fine. I don't think we need to add any, any more tests for that. I think it's simple enough. Um, it's a shame you can't test like the anything else on it like the I guess there was a there was a, there was a width there was a width check oh cool there you go displayed title was displayed all good I guess there was um there's other assertions but I don't think we need I don't know if, if it makes sense to add any other tests like we had the width um set text equals I wonder if that's a better. Oh no. Cool. Um. Nice. So we've got that title text in there. I wonder if we can do anything else like super quickly. Um. Yeah. Spaces. Um. Yeah. I think that's good for now. I don't think. I don't think there's much point starting anything else. Um. I haven't really got too much time, so we can leave it there for now. But yeah, just to recap. Um. I think fancy in, in the first first stream for this, but yeah, just set we we had we had this used in about seven places. Um, kind of you know a lot of repetition when really we can just put it out into its own composable and reuse it, um, which we've now done and we've reused this composable in about seven places. And yeah, I think it's a good thing to do if you're working with compose. Um, not only yeah, it's good reuse, but in terms of testability, uh, it's a great allows us to be able to test individual components and um, have a more maintainable structure. Um, yeah, so yeah, just to recap, as you can see, there's a lot going on in this class, and I think throughout these streams, we'll we'll start tidying things up and um, hopefully give a bit more more context into what's going on here um, and working with Compose in general. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be back tomorrow around the same time. Uh, maybe do half hour we'll look at some other things um yeah so if you want to check out the project in the meantime it's on my github um github.com forward slash try there joe forward slash minimize uh, completely open source so yeah feel free to check out the code and um yeah guess i'll catch you tomorrow